To select a layer, simply click on it. You can select multiple layers by marquee selecting, or by holding Command on Mac or Control on Windows and by clicking on the layers. Move selected shapes by clicking and dragging. You can scale by click dragging on the scale boxes at the edges of your selection. If you move the mouse slightly further out from the scale boxes, the mouse changes to a rotation cursor. You can click drag to rotate shapes when this is showing. If you have multiple shapes on top of each other, you can use the right click menu to select the layer that you're after. When you group shapes, selection works a bit differently. Clicking will select the group, which you can then move as one. When you double click on a shape in a group, you move down a level. When making further selections in the group, you stay at the same level until you either deselect the group or you double click to go deeper again. You can direct select any layer at any depth by holding down the S key before clicking. The selection you're about to make will always preview so that you know what you're going to end up with. Zoom the viewport with the scroll wheel or by using the scroll gesture on a trackpad. Press F to fit the view to the selected layers. With no layer selected, F will fit the composition in the view. Shift F will center on the selected layers without zooming. Command F on the Mac or Control F on Windows will zoom to fit the composition in the view, regardless of the selection. Playback controls can be found in the viewport settings bar. Space will start and stop playback. Different tools can be found on the left hand side of the viewport. Some of these deserve a video all to themselves, but others such as the primitive tools are quite simple. To activate a tool, simply click on the icon. Then click drag in the viewport to make a primitive. You can also simply click to create a primitive with the default settings. Press V to switch back to the transform tool. You may have noticed the additional controls that have appeared in the viewport. These are here because we have a rectangle selected. Rectangles have viewport controls for width and height and corner rounding. You'll find these kinds of controls on many shapes and shaders. To turn snapping on, use the magnet toggle. There are various settings in the accompanying popover for grid and bounding box snapping, point snapping and so on. See the documentation for more details. Another useful setting is the toggle for showing the composition boundaries. That way, if your composition has a black background, you'll still know where its edges are. To move a pivot point, double click on it and then drag it around the viewport. You can also edit this numerically in the shape settings in the attribute editor. Moving the pivot point will change the location at which the shape scales and rotates, so be careful when doing this. If you need to recenter a pivot point, select the shape and choose center pivot from the shapes menu. It's also worth pointing out that the right click menu has a copy as SVG option. This will copy the current shape into the clipboard for use in other applications. Snapshots are a useful way for you to save an image of your viewport for you to compare with later on. Use the view menu to show, save and remove snapshots. You can also preview all the saved snapshots at once. I'll use the hotkey for that, which is Alt-5. Rulers and guides can be turned on via the view menu. To create a guide, simply drag one out from a ruler. To edit a guide, double click on it. And to delete it, drag it back onto a ruler. Other useful settings in the view menu include the ability to choose a viewport quality which is useful for incredibly complex scenes when you want a simple preview without melting your GPU. Though not part of the viewport, it's worth pointing out the composition settings at this point, as it's here that you can change the resolution, FPS, playback step, and importantly for us, the composition background color. If you want a transparent background, you can either set the transparent background color, or you can use the menu item under the composition menu. When a background is transparent, you'll see a checkerboard pattern by default. Or you can choose to see the composition background color by clicking the checkerboard toggle here. Please note that even when turning the checkerboard off, your composition will still have transparency as this is controlled by the alpha of the background color. 